Donnie and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business, we can help. Wednesday and all of our guests today are brought to you by our title sponsor, Able Auctions, ableauctions.ca. Delaney's OK Tyron Langley uh, inbox, several uh, submissions, people uh, wondering about the All-Star Game, the NHL yeah. All-Star Game. <clears throat> of course, with the Four Nations Cup, there will be no NHL no, All-Star, no All-Star game. game. That Four Nations Cup will uh, take the place of the All-Star Game. Long, long break, though. Yep. And given that, given the fact there's a long break, maybe you can excuse them having a... Uh, the Stanley Cup final, or the Stanley Cup being Later. presented in, in in late June. Yep. Uh, BC Lions play, and they've been hot lately, winning their last uh, couple of games now, seven and six. They host the Argos Friday at BC Place. It's Legends uh, Night, 70th season uh, celebration. They're going to be wearing their gunmetal gray uh, jerseys. Yep. Love those. Uh, the 2000 Lions, maybe the most unsung Lions Grey Cup champions. They're going to be uh, honored. Yep. On Fridays, they go uh, as they're enshrined into the team's wall of fame to talk about that and more. Lions analyst, former Lion, Julio Caravetta. Julio, thanks for doing this. Hope you had a great summer. How are you? I'm very well, thanks, guys. How are you? Lovely. Good. Very well. What are your memories of uh, Drummond, Millington, uh, Allen, yeah. Jackson, and, and those 2,000 uh, Lions who uh, won the Grey Cup against the Alouettes yeah. here in Calgary? Yeah, no, what I remember is uh, how overpowering they were, uh, especially offensive with uh, with Robert Drummond and uh, Sean Millington. I, I just remember how strong those two guys were. Um, I remember Kelly Wilshire, I believe, was their weak side linebacker. And I remember at that time, defenses had kind of started to change a little bit where they were going to smaller linebackers who could, you know, who were quicker and could cover out of the backfield, a lot of a lot of teams were using slots, and th- that's kind of when the game started to change a little bit. And uh, I remember the Lions just basically with their power up front. They had a great offensive line lay- led by Jamie Terrace and Corey Mantica. Uh, they just used Robert Drummond and and Millington and and with Damon Allen uh, as their quarterback. They were just. You mean if you if you tried to stop the run, then Damon was quick enough and fast enough to get out of the pocket on the Sally Ran. And uh, but I do remember how how just how strong they were up front and how they basically rolled right through them. And we should mention that was also significant because it was uh, Louis Pasaglia's final yeah final yep. CFL yeah. season yeah yeah I, Big Lou. Uh, what can you say about uh, Big Lou? Uh, just um, you know one of the greatest that ever played the game. Um, you know, uh, has done so much for the city, both on the field and off the field, and continues to do that. So, um, uh, that exactly. And I think for him, it was very fitting that uh, his career ended the way that it did with yeah. a championship, because that's what he deserved. Yeah, I remember him scoring in the final regular season game, BC plays yeah. against yep. Saskatchewan right. on right. a quarterback sneak. Push. Got himself a touchdown. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. Remember that. Hey, two straight impressive wins uh, for the Lions, uh, Julio. After five straight losses, what what are you seeing? Well, I, you know, I mean, I, I've I've always believed this. You know, I mean, even when the Lions were going through their their stretch where they weren't, you know, playing very well, I, I just I, I still believed in the team and the talent. And I just think that you know sometimes you go through stretches in a season where things aren't going your way and you're not playing well, and then you compound that with mistakes and penalties, and um, they just didn't p- play the kind of football that we were used to seeing at the beginning of the year. So a few things I think that have that have changed. One, obviously, Nathan Rourke. Um, you know, who took over at quarterback is, I think, starting to find his groove. Um, you know, I think our expectations were probably a little bit too high when he first arrived, thinking that he was just going to pick up where he left off. And that's, mm. that's just, that wasn't the case. And I think it speaks to just how good the league is. Um, I think that getting Matthew Betts has very, has improved that team um, because now he gives them a threat off the edge. And now with him and, uh, Sione Tuihema off the off the other edge. I think what ends up happening is that teams now have to respect those two guys and have to pay a little bit more attention. And now it frees up inside a little bit. And then you see Christian Covington and Josh Banks and Jonah Tavai and Thibaut Dubai. Those guys are all starting to really put some pressure on the quarterback in the middle of that defense. Hmm. And so when you're able to pressure the quarterback or make him uncomfortable with four guys. Uh, you're able to do a lot of different things, and you're forcing the quarterback to throw the ball a little bit quicker than he wants to. Um, so all the defenses that are very, very successful in this league, 
do that very thing. They are not going to beat themselves by blitzing you and, you know, taking chances. They're going to force you to be methodical getting downfield and force you into mistakes. And the Lions have been able to do that uh, defensively. So um, I think all three phases, guys, when you start to win like this and you start to um, turn the corner, like this is where you're getting – uh, contributions from all three aspects of your team. You're getting offensive production, you're getting defense production, and they're getting field position from their from their special teams. And when you can start doing that, you're you're usually going to win football games because you're getting contributions, positive contributions from all three sides. Uh, Julio, uh, back to Nathan Rourke. Uh, really good the last two games, but one stat that is concerning has to be the seven interceptions. I know two in Montreal were tipped. Yeah, uh, that that that's seven in four games, and that's yeah. uh, four touchdown passes. What's going on with the picks? Well, I mean, I, I think last week's number was a little bit skewed. Obviously, those those two balls that were tipped, the I think they they're not his fault. Um, and I, I think too, like you know, I mean, as I said. I don't. This this league is good. Like the defenses are good. Um, there are good players out there. And you know Nathan. Nathan. I, I don't. I'm not. I'm not putting words in Nathan's mouth. But I'm sure he, he he's going to agree with that, right? That that you know the defenses in this league can play. And and you know if you make a mistake with a ball placement or a little bit late, um, you you get guys that are crashing down and and they're they're good players. So um, the one thing that continues to happen for for Nathan is that he he's progressing every single week right he's getting more and more comfortable um you can see it with his decision making and this team's only going to get stronger um as it goes down the stretch here with Vernon Adams you know getting healthier and getting almost to the point of 100% healthy um not saying that there's you know going to be any issues with that but um you know this team is going to have two very very good quarterbacks and um, a lot of teams would do anything to, ha to be where the Lions are right now with their depth. Um, but I can't tell you how impressed I've been with the way this whole thing has been handled um, between the quarterbacks. Um, yeah. Vernon Adams is, a, is, you know, I mean, as, as, as true a professional as you can be. Um, and I think for both of those guys, it just goes to show you in this day and age of sport, that you have two guys playing a marquee position that are all about team and they put their own interests second and it's the team's interests first. And when you have leadership like that, you're going to have positive success. Absolutely. And we talked about Vernon yesterday and what he's going through and how tough it is, but he's been a great team player. Uh, that victory in Montreal Friday, uh, Julio might have been their, one of their biggest road wins in years. It, it was so yeah. fun to watch. William Standback, great game, leads the CFL in rushing. For the first time in a long time, we could say they got a running back, a running game, yeah. Julio. Oh, yeah. Rick, that's a great point. And, you know, we talked about you, you, when, earlier when I was talking about offense and you, you always should go to the quarterback. But let me tell you something. That guy is a beast. Um, I cannot tell you how often. He turns what looks like maybe what should be a two-yard gain into a five yeah. or six-yard gain. He is just so strong, and and what you know excites me the most about him is obviously his ability to run the football. But he's one of those guys that gets better as the game progresses. Right when when defensively you start to wear them down, that's when he becomes even more difficult to handle. A lot reminds me a lot of Mike Pringle back in the day. Yeah, yeah. And I think, too, the other part with him is he is very, very good with his hands out of the backfield. Like, he is an excellent receiver. Um, so, uh, I added I mean, that added dimension for the first time in a long time, like we say that running game is such a big, big part of the Lions' game plan that, you know, that's winning football. At this time of the year especially, and I know the Lions now, they've finished a very, very, very difficult stretch Two months, they pr they played one home game, mm -hmm. um, so they're going to have the benefit now of playing quite a few games at home. But who knows where this thing ends up in the end and where they end up playoff wise? But when you have the running game going at this time of the year, that's what you want, right? To be that ability um, to wear teams down defensively. Uh, that that's that's been the, I think one of the things that has been lacking on this team, and now to see it emerge the way it is. It's going to be exciting to see where this team can take it. 
We haven't talked to you all summer. Just very quickly, Julio, did you have a good time in Victoria? I loved it. Um, I, I just thought it was just an absolute grand slam by really the city was. of Victoria, by the Lions. They, you know, guys, I, I, my wife is from the island. Uh, I spend a lot of time over there with them, but very rarely do I actually go into the inner harbor in Victoria. And anybody who hasn't gone there needs to go there because it is just gorgeous in the summertime. But overall, I think this might, you know, as far as the city and the event and the venue and all those things, of course, there are going to be things that they could do better mm -hmm. if they want to go back, and they probably will at some point. But I think it may, as for for their team, they may look back at that stretch in Victoria and say that was the turning point for this team because they were able to spend some time together, go to dinner together, uh, all the things that you hear about, you know, the team and building team and character and getting to know one another. It was come, it came at a perfect time. So who, who knows where it's going to go? But I think when we look back on the year, um, and hopefully you're looking back on the year after a championship, you're going to say that that was maybe the turning point of this season for them. Julio, thanks for this. I uh, hope you had a great summer, and we'll talk to you again thanks, soon. Guys. It's always great to see you guys. So all the best the rest of the way, and uh, thanks for having me. Thanks, Julio.